हर हर महादेव सर हर हर महादेव थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग हियर आई नो वी बिन ट्राइंग टू मेक यू कम हियर फॉर सो लॉन्ग लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑब्स्टिकल्स इन बिटवीन एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट वॉज दैट आई हैव कम फ्रॉम ऋषिकेश एज दे कॉल इट द देव भूमि सो आई एम वेरी एक्साइटेड टू बी हियर एंड यू नो इट डजेंट मैटर वॉट happened and how it all happened uh, how the planning happened for me to come here but i'm here right now and i'm very very excited to talk to you definitely and it's uh, actually i wouldn't call it a coincidence but exactly one year ago on march 4th we were actually in rishikesh my family and i okay that's and, wonderful and um we were by we, that's where we took our uh, first dip in the ganga river and it was a beautiful experience we'll get more into that towards Absolutely. this podcast so um because uh mah shivratri is coming up this podcast will be <laughs> focused on lord shiva correct just a back story i think um my mom you know she's been i think her i i guess her east for a very long time her first you know the god that she worshiped was lord shiva yeah. um lord shiva is he's considered to be the supreme by many people in india yes. and um i think uh, she was very very close to him actually every mah shivratri my mom herself and she would make me as well uh, stay up the entire night actually as they say um and it would just be an outburst of like energy you know mm. it's like uh, it's very difficult to explain in words but the entire night it would just be like almost like awakening is happening and this realization is happening and this connection with lord shiva so i think that's probably why we wanted to make you come here because of that that's all maybe connection. if you can rephrase it i think that's probably why uh, mahadev wanted mm-hmm. us to have this particular podcast on this particular topic of mahadev yes so uh when we speak about lord shiva there's a lot of times a misconception by many that you know we associate with him with like the kind of the left side or dark side of hinduism where there's tantra involved there's uh ritualistic tantric you know things rituals involved that is not just the conventional type of rituals that we participate in um you know there's a lot of different types of uh you know tantra and and we're going to go into agoris as well so i want to kind of talk a little bit about that that why is it that lord shiva is often associated with this dark side of hinduism where there's tantra and agoris etc to begin with let me first uh, express my gratitude to you and uh, to your team for inviting me here um i come to this podcast against the backdrop of uh, me being a disciple of my guru swami sadyojata shankarashram with whom i went to the kailash first the manasarovar and the kailash to do the parikrama of both i initially would like to say that uh, mahadev represents beyond hinduism Rap- mahadev represents um the idea of meditation i believe every uh, sadhak student of spirituality um for that entity for him or her uh, it's always been uh, mahadev has always been an inspiration because what he says is um uh, go rise and attain enlightenment and uh, his methods uh, which are connected to meditation are those which everybody can aspire for and practice as simple as on the day of ma shivaratri if you do om namah shivai that mantra if you chant it in your mind with a rudraksh mala preferably uh, it does uh, help you to focus your mind therefore i don't really see you know dark or light or whatever i don't see because if there is a sun there is a moon yeah exactly so i think mahadev represents the idea of uh, the ease with which the breadth with which the depth with which a spiritual sadhaka mm. aspirant can uh, practice meditation and attain enlightenment that's the way i look at uh, mahadev beyond darkness uh, is mahadev and you will have certain ways like the aghori's practice mm. which may come across as a bit of the dark ways which actually it isn't yeah uh, you know if you go to uh, uh, if you go to a crematorium and uh, 
you sit there in the night firstly will you be able to because it's dark but Most agori people would not be wouldn't be to. even thinking of you know right. going even close to a smashan of bhumi um, but the aghoris practice that now they that practice may be understood as a bit of dark practice but actually it's the darkness in which they practice that which is very enlightening i think just going a step back for people who might not even really know who aghoris are or what they represent i think it's a term to be honest um even recently i studied about aghoris yeah. most people i know don't really have the right definition right. of who they are what they do and why they do it okay. so can you give us like a uh, you know essentially like a 101 on exactly who are agoris definitely i would love to do that because i've even written a book on it called agori and untold story where i did go through the process of understanding who they are because they are with us they are on this planet and they practice meditation as well um by the word agori itself means he or she who doesn't fear darkness can there be female agori yes there, there are can okay. there be isn't a question there are but the percentage is very less right, right because the kind of meditative practices the tantra practices that that are expected to be done mm -hmm. are uh, very stringent mm -hmm. and so the the males are more okay uh, but then that's fine there are other ways of uh, attaining shivatva um but there are if you go to the kamakya temple in guwahati you may come across you will come across on certain days uh, the female the female agoris yep <clears throat> agoris beyond the gender the gender whether the male or female are those who have the strength and the will power and the fearlessness to not just face darkness but even go beyond um if i can put it that way in a way where i say that gnan yog bhakti yog bhajan kirtan are beautiful ways a uh, marga paths to attain enlightenment what the aghori says that if you take 6 months of bhakti yoga for example to reach a particular point of enlightenment through their marga which is to go to the cremation ground and do their uh, techniques of meditation uh, it may take just a week not not a few months so they i wouldn't say they are they, they're doing a shortcut but maybe they're not cutting short but they are trying to reach uh, the same uh, place of destination. enlightenment destination without really uh, investing too much time jo hum 10 mehn mein kar sakte hain wo 10 din mein karna chahte hain what they what others would take 10 uh, year, months to do they want to attain it uh, through a shorter period of time and mainly what i understood is they are very fearless and a solid strength through will power i'm not saying they are the only sect of sadhakas with that kind of an attitude even the naga babas are that way or the yogis who practice meditation like from where i came from rishikesh uh, if you if if we were to travel even higher um, beyond uh, gomukh you know you'll come across some yogis who sit uh, almost bare uh, in the ice to practice certain tantra so the will power is tremendously strong not only those yogis but even coming to your question even aghoris aghor he or she who doesn't fear darkness here the darkness is not only uh, where there is no sun no moon complete darkness it's also the darkness which is metaphoric you know dark thoughts um dark actions they go beyond that and their main uddeshya their main idea is to uh, attain the enlightenment and merge with shiva with mahadev i think agar hum log uh, physical appearance ki baat karte hain so ordinary people like us we want ki hum log acha dikhe uh, even if we're on camera we look good mm. or if we go out in the public we know we want ki chalo hum log acche kapde pehne or we look presentable it's just, it's just human nature yeah. but jitna maine uh, agoris ko dekha hai um, even in person and online it seems ki wo honestly apne physical appearance ke bare mein परवाह नहीं करते एंड आई वॉन्ट नो के 
why is that is there a reason does it have to do with ego okay they are above their you know above and beyond their body or their physical appearance i want to know ke okay, uska reason kya hai exactly uh, you know can i touch a bit uh, touch upon a, something that's a bit humorous that okay. you know i know of a scientist um he was so involved in his processes of research uh that after 6 months he had long hair and um he was a bit untidy to look at but then his research paper was phenomenal i hope uh, our viewers will understand what i'm trying to say is there the agoris are and i'm not only talking about agori sadhus or sadhvis anyone but now that you ask me about agoris i can say that they are on a path on a mission to practice certain tantras certain uh, techniques where they have no time they are not interested in their upkeep so the hair grows then they try the bun uh, one of the techniques or one of the things they do is they smear ash all over their body okay this is to make them feel very much one with shiva but why ash specifically uh, it's because it also deters insects and uh, things which can come and disturb them may distract them so when they sit for meditation they sit for hours and they sit at places which could be having mosquitoes and cockroaches and stuff so with the ash that they put they it is said that it deters and repels uh, such kind of distractions so that the agoris can sit at the place and practice their sadhana okay. and therefore coming to your, the root point is uske liye bona uske bare mein utne sochte nahi ki main kaise dikh raha hu they uh, practically unke paas mirror bhi nahi hoga ha right so and if the hair grows and becomes matted wo tie karte hain you'll find a lot of these agori sadhus they tie their hair like a bun right because they don't want even want the hair to come in the way when they're doing the sadhana bas yahi main samajhta hu ki ek vyakti ki focus hoti hai ki unka aim hota hai ki unko shiva tatva prapt karna hai baki sab side mein it doesn't matter that's the answer to your question when we talk about uh like the rituals that agoris do yeah. so can you dive into from your experience or your research यू नो क्या प्रैक्टिस होती हैं अगोरीज डू एंड स्पेसिफिकली उनका सिम्बलिज्म क्या है विद रीचिंग शिवा वैसे तो उनके प्रैक्टिस काफ़ी हैं लेकिन बहुत सीक्रेटिव है अगोरी साधुज आई वॉज एबल टू मीट विद अ कपल ऑफ दम एंड इन द प्रजेंट लाइफ ओके मैं ऑलवेज मानता हूँ कि आई बिलीव इन द प्रीवियस बर्थ्स Uh, in fact a lot of the stuff that i've written in my part 1 of agori and uh, i'm writing part 2 is based on a lot of it is based on uh, what i may have encountered not in this life in my past lives coming to your um, prashna ki aap wo kya karte hain to main ek do cheeze do teen practices main bata sakta hu jo main bata sakta hu right uh, one is i've seen this is there is one <clears throat> practice where the agori sadhu is told by the way i have to make this very clear that agoris also have a guru really yes hum sirf agori ko dekhte hain wo baithe rehte hain smashan bhumi mein ya janglon mein but wo baithe based on the instructions that he or she receives from uh, his or her guru because wo margadarshan ke liye bahut zaruri hota hai so one of the uh, techniques they do or practices that they follow is on the body of a on the dead body of a person with the permission of the people to whom the dead body belongs the person belongs they sit on its body and perform some rituals which include an important part which is part of that ritual while they're seated on the upper body of that dead person in the cremation ground before the cremation happens is wo baith ke na wahan pe tapasya karte hain kuch kshanon ke liye matlab kuch minton ke liye shayad aadhe ghante ke liye wo depend karta hai and they do some chantings and uh, unke gestures hote hain as if they are communicating with that entity 
But why do they need to sit on the dead bodies? Well, be, uh, so one of the things that I understood, which I can share here, is that बैठने से उस शरीर के जो vibrations है, energy है, वो इनमें आ जाए, transmit हो जाए. And there is a way. ऐसे बैठ के नहीं होता है. Firstly, I can't even imagine myself or anyone sitting on a dead body. Can you just I mean, even it's even difficult to imagine. Like in many dekha, wo bed the, and wo available hai. You know, if you're on the internet. But the main thing that I'm trying to tell you is that wo bhi ek technique hai. The other thing is more simpler is they they do anushthans. That is repeating a particular mantra for maybe ten thousand times mala. Or wo bed the hai, jo burnt body ka jo ash hota hai. उसका हीप होता है उसके ऊपर बैठ के वो तपस्या करते हैं अघोरी साधु प्रैक्टिस वी कैन से तंत्र मंत्र जो कुछ है लेकिन मूलतः एट द रूट दे प्रैक्टिस द रेसिटेशन ऑफ मंत्र ओके एंड दे डू दैट एट द क्रिमेशन ग्राउंड सो एज टू एब्सॉर्ब द वाइब्रेशन एंड ऑल्सो टू कनेक्ट विद सर्टन स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जीज एज वेल The energies, not the body, the energies. तो वो मैं आपको बता सकता हूँ उसके अलावा काफ़ी हैं जो शायद मेरे पुस्तक में आ जाएगा बट फ्रेंकली इन अ यू नो एज आई एम स्पीकिंग टू यू ये चीज़ें भी अगर लोग पता करें कि ऐसे भी होता है तो दैट्स ग्रेट एज एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हु दीज अघोरी साधु आर काफ़ी लोगों ने उनको मिसअंडरस्टैंड किया है Right. Yes. कि वो दे ओनली ड्रिंक और दे हैव दिस वेरी बैड टेम्पर इश्यूज फिर वो पैसे पूछते रहते हैं मेरा एक मानना है कि इफ सम योगी कीप्स आस्किंग फॉर आर्म्स एंड मनी देन दे समथिंग रॉन्ग बिकॉज एन अगोरी प्रैक्टिस हिज और हर तंत्र और टेक्निक्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन टू अटेन शिवत्व they don't wear anything except their undergarment yeah. and then they wear uh, they put uh, the ash over their body so they don't need any they don't need anything and things. they don't want to be disturbed ye mujhe ye mujhe pata hai for sure they don't like to be interrupted or disturbed ki koi aake puchte baithe kya kar rahe ho aap aur ye kaise hota hai even when i had to you know i did that because i really was keen i was genuine mere mein main mobile ya kuch leke nahi gaya tha i only wanted to know and if they are able to relate to that then i think it's easier but it's not easy to just go to an agori baba firstly to spot a genuine agori baba aajkal bahut difficult hai difficult hai ha to aisa hai is it correct to say ke jo agoris hain agori babas hain wo in a way they're not scared of of death and they they know ke you know what their ultimate goal is they're not afraid to die because they know their physical body dying is not a it's not really a big deal is right. that correct agori sadhus jo hote hain wo sadhna karte hain isliye we call them sadhus sadhna karte hain meditation practice karte hain aur jis sharir mein wo hain usko wo sambhal ke rakhte hain because for them it's an instrument therefore they their perception about death is very different to our perception of death unke liye philosophically speaking you know kuch bigadta hai to hum replace kar dete hain and uh, the replacement could be called anything for in a human being the replacement is called death because wo that's how i that's what i believe that the the soul then wants to take another body right they it finds a body gets born and then grows yeah i have the same belief that's reincarnation and reincarnation. You know, the cycle goes on absolutely but while they are in that body they want to make the best of it so they will not harm their body but they will use it to uh, the utmost wo itna uska vapar karenge to reach shivatva आई थिंक आप जैसे तंत्र के ऊपर टच कर रहे थे वी वर कैन टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट और गो इन टू अ लिटल स्टोरी एक्चुअली इट्स अ पर्सनल स्टोरी सो माई मॉम इन कपल ईयर्स बैक नाउ शी एक्चुअली टुक मी टू माँ बगलोमुखी टेम्पल 
and um you know at that time i didn't know much about it but we were told that you know uh when you read about it that ma baglumuki especially she's used a lot in tantra in a lot of rituals uh before you know people used to go to her to kind of break their um you know inner vices that might be negative now a lot of people go to her to for court cases for example to get rid of le- legal battles you know the modernization has changed things yeah. but one thing i can say is that mm-hmm. definitely uh, as we were approaching the temple and during our time there and the puja like there was a lot of a lot of mystical things that happened a lot of obstacles um a lot of energies mm-hmm. that you could feel are uh, very powerful right. so it's just a personal experience that um you know when people say that there are certain gods or goddesses sure. that are used uh, in rituals or they're you know chanted uh, when you're talking about tantra i believe in that because it's kind of a personal experience correct correct no it's true uh, amira that um, if there's good then there could be bad as well or evil as well evil uh, may not be that explicit you can't see it um, and therefore there are these energies like bagla mukhi kavach hai uh, kavach is a protection um, i remember like you have a story and you uh, shared it so beautifully um, i have a f- i have a person who's a good friend of mine um, she's married and everything is going fine but uh, there were some personal issues in her life and to such an extent that she started uh, experiencing paranormal uh, uh, you know what do you call it Par- paranormal experiences i guess uh, she would find um, things moving uh, she would find she would see like a smoky thing and you know it's mainly i think to create fa- fear because i don't see it going beyond that i hope not to usko she of course uh, being गॉड बिलीव शी वॉज टोल्ड कि ये करो वो करो लेकिन कुछ हुआ नहीं देन शी वॉज गिवन द बगला मुखी कवच एंड आई हर्ड हर रिसाइड दैट एंड इट्स सो पावरफुल कमिंग टू योर पॉइंट इज देर आर एनर्जीज दैट कैन एक्ट एज प्रोटेक्टर्स बगला मुखी इज वन ऑफ दम सम ऑफ अस आर गिवन शिव कवच ओम शिव कवचम ओम अस्या श्री शिव कवच स्त्रोत्र महामंत्र से ब्रह्मा ऋषि अनुष्ट छंद श्री सदाशिव रुद्रो देवता श्रीम ह्री क्ली बीज ह्री शक्ति रंकीलक श्री श्री सदाशिव प्रीत्यर्थे शिव कवच स्त्रोत्र जपे विनियोग ओम ध्यान एंड देन द कवच स्टार्ट्स इट्स अ ओपन हैंडेड कवच मतलब ऐसा नहीं कि वो मंत्र है कि हरे बापरे आपने कैसे बताया सबको ऐसा नहीं इट्स अ शिव कवच इट्स देर इट्स इवन देर ऑन यूट्यूब एंड ऑन इंटरनेट लेकिन इट्स अ कवच इट्स अ प्रोटेक्शन कवच इज अ प्रोटेक्शन तो इसलिए वोट यू सींग इज ट्रू दैट समटाइम्स दे कम एंड दे प्रोटेक्ट यू एंड यू कूड कॉन्स्ट्रू दैट आप देखते हो कि ये क्या हो रहा है कुछ अलग लग रहा है actually the it's a protection being formed around that person as i feel like that um agar hum log bhagwan shiv ki baat karte hain so i'm just going to play the devil's advocate here for a minute and say that um i've heard uh, and or there are friends of mine who for example belong to other religions and you know mm-hmm. they say ke jo aapke bhagwan hai जैसे शिव जी की बात करते हैं mm-hmm. तो वो खुद अपने आप को संभाल नहीं पाए जब उनको दुख हुआ था माँ सती के बारे में वो खुद सफ़र कर रहे थे उन्हें यू नो कितनी उद्दम मचाई एंड um, आपके खुद के भगवान अपने अपना तो यू नो टेक केयर नहीं कर सकते वो हमारा क्या टेक केयर करेंगे हाउ कैन यू नो योर गॉड सेव अस वन दे कैन इवन कंट्रोल देयर अमोशंस और देयर रिएक्शंस and uh, i have a view point in this uh, beforehand but i want to know your take on this like for example if if i was telling you this statement to aapka kya jawab hoga i would start by saying that mahadev shiv ek bahut 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 advanced yogi purush hai and sometimes you find it easy to relate with shiva when you hear such aspects about his personality yeah 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 because har ek har ek ke andar ek shiva hota hai ek parvati hoti hai shiva shakti kehte hain usko 
um therefore i think it's it's been created to make every sadhaka correlate to that entity called shiva and it's it's true with even uh, some other faiths where somebody's you know put the crown of thorns around and uh, uh, you know put on the cross and yet uh, they come out and uh, there's a new a fresh body and then there's a resurgence of faith so you i would say that shiva teaches us through that through that story that there will be ups and downs but through that you got to still maintain your energy levels and your strength and your uh, your your sadhana to attain uh, the shiva tatva or the shivatva i would love to know your take though this is yeah, what my take is my take is uh, at least what i've and i've discussed this with my mom mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. that we think it's uh, it's essentially like what you call maybe leela or a divine play mm-hmm. that gods or goddesses might portray again like you said to teach you right sure. uh, even when we look at like the lives of lord krishna right um i mean he's he's god right and but the fact is the way his stories are portrayed where he went through these sufferings and uh you know he parted away from radha and there's a lot of different so like you know people might say that okay did that really happen there's a lot of speculations but i think or what you know what i'm believed is that it's in a way a leela to again t- you know when you see an indian soldier huh. um and you meet that entity that person at a wedding he's got that personality where he say hey hi how are you kitni badi ho gayi and you know you talk to the person and he's like a good friend uh, ya uncle hai the same entity without your knowledge you may not know but he's a commando of the indian army and when the call comes uh, there's a d- development or there's a change in the personality and he becomes the best commando of the indian for, uh, you know in army तो बट वो ही व्यक्ति एक दूसरी स्टोरी आपको बताता है कि मैं हूँ आपके जैसा ही बट वेन द सिचुएशन डिमांड्स कृष्णा शोड टू अर्जुना हिज रूप महास्वरूप या हिज हिज फॉर्म सिमिलर इज द केस विद महादेव इज वेन थिंग्स हैव टू बी डिस्ट्रॉयड हिज थर्ड आई ओपन्स अप और थिंग्स हैव टू बी क्रिएटेड देर इज महादेव देयर there's a story about how he engaged with ravana who was uh, arguably the most ardent bhakts of shiva he wrote the shiva tanda of stotra which is also therefore known as the ravana stotra and for your viewers to give you a glimpse of how ravana was you know we again ravana is the same thing we think ravana was a villain yes for what he did he he deserved what he got but he was a shiva bhakt and he he was a sanskrit scholar and unhone shiva ko impress kiya tha vardan mein unhone kaha aap aaiye hamare sath shri lanka yes i am aware of, of that yeah. story but you know he uh, articulated that shiva sutram i would like to recite one couplet as a remembrance of this bhakt ओम शिवतांडवस्त्र जटा कटा हि संभ्रम भ्रम निलिप निर्झरी विलोलवी चिवल्लरी विराजमान मूर्धनी धगत 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 ज्वललाट पट्ट पावके किशोर चंद्र शेखरे रति प्रतीक्षण मम कदा निलिप निर्झरी निकुंज कोटरे वसन विमुक्त दुर्मती सदा शिस्तमंजलिम वह विमुक्त लोल लोचलोल लाम भाल लग्न क शिवे मंत्र मुच्चर कदा सुखी भवाम्यहम ओं मम पार्वती पते हर हर महादेव हि रोट दिस इसको लयभद भी उन्होंने किया एंड दैट इज द पावर ऑफ द भक्ति दैट एन एंटिटी लाइक रावणा हैड फॉर शिवा बट शिवा लाइक यू सैड हैज डिफरेंट पर्सनैलिटीज द वे ही वॉज विद पार्वती एंड दैट स्टोरी इट्स जस्ट टू मेक अस रिलेट विद दैट एंटिटी वो ध्यान भी करते हैं तो कोई उसको उनको डिस्टर्ब नहीं कर पाता था 
वो तीव्रता उनके साधना में दैट इज वॉट वी शुड एस्पायर और महाशिवरात्रि यू नो हैविंग रुद्राक्ष और जस्ट सिटिंग एंड डूइंग ओम नमः शिवाय 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 इफ यू डू दिस हंड्रेड एंड एट टाइम्स इन योर माइंड मेंटल चांटिंग ऑफ ओम नमः शिवाय इट विल फिल यू अप विद अ लॉर्ड ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड पॉजिटिव वाइब्रेशन ऑफ ओम नमः शिवाय दैट पार्ट ऑल्सो वी मस्ट रिमेंबर बट ही डिड हैव अदर एस्पेक्ट्स टू मेक अस फील दैट अरे ये तो महादेव तो हमारे हम भी हैं महादेव जैसे समथिंग लाइक दैट I think uh, one thing uh, which I want to clarify is that uh, Ravana, uh, which is you know he's considered to be like you said a uh, so-called villain when we speak about his character in Hinduism yeah. or yeah. stories. So, uh, but he was a very big devotee of Lord Shiva, which I'm also aware of. So, there's a bit of confusion that uh, you know, why why his devotee was there and Lord Shiva impressed him away and you know that part was real but why did he still be a negative act portray kare and why was he still True. a negative and character? i have a very cute answer to that i love to answer it with uh, similes mm-hmm. metaphors um you know when i uh, was gifted a pair of shoes i was very happy a good brand and then um, after just two three days i had a f- couple of friends one of them uh, when we went for football he was wearing a pair of shoes which were far better and he kept showing it off you know that and without the words right the way he was strutting around and all making it very imperative for us to look at the shoes um sometimes when you know you're very good you're unknowingly or knowingly filled with ahankar ego and this exactly uh, what i call is the downfall the beginning of the downfall of ravana is the ego that i am ravana i am strong i am the greatest bhakta of shiva no one else can be you know coming close just like these are my shoes and these are the best i have when you have this kind of uh, ahankar and you're bereft of humility vinamrata uh, which is so so important कॉन्फिडेंस एंड विनम्रता जब साथ में आते हैं आई फील इट्स अ ग्रेट कैटलिस्ट अ वंडरफुल कैटलिस्ट फॉर साधना लेकिन अगर अहंकार है और आपके बात करने की का जो तरीका है वो भी बहुत उष्ट है इट्स 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 वेरी रूड एंड कर्ट एंड इंसल्टिंग इट विल इट विल क्रिएट अ सनैरियो वै यू विल जो कहते हैं हिंदी में अपने पैर पे आपको लाड़ी मार रहे हो सो वेन अ पर्सन थिंक्स सो गुड अबाउट हिम सेल्फ एंड एवरीथिंग एल्स इज मेडी ओकर एंड देन फॉर हिम वेन इज सो सीता ही वॉज लाइक ये तो मेरी होनी चाहिए एंड देन यू लिसन टू द रॉन्ग वॉइस सेंग दैट ओ शी इज सो ब्यूटिफुल यू आर द ग्रेट यू नो रावन यू शुड एंड दैट्स how i describe as the beginning of the downfall of uh, ravana it's it's a lesson for all of us that when we do well in life in whatever sector um if you meditate if you do your bhakti to your ishtadev it could be anyone it could be lord krishna it could be uh, devi saraswati durga um or shiva it will make you humble it will make you respectful to the people with whom you interact bhale aapke paas bahut kuch hai aur us vyakti ke paas zyada nahi hai fir bhi you will work together as a team i believe that did not happen with ravana which is why he had to face uh, the arrows of uh, rama mm-hmm. 